Hello and welcome to the Admin Bar, the community that helps you streamline your process, sharpen your skills, and demand higher paying projects. My name is Kyle Van Dusen from Ogle Web Design, just outside of Fort Worth, Texas. And with me, as always, is my co-host, Matt Siebert from Matthew Siebert Design. How's it going today, Matt? It is going well. It's a bit cloudy and rainy, but uh, inside doing this, that wins. Yeah, no doubt. It's never rainy in my office, so that's okay. The day it's raining in my office, I have a problem. Mm-hmm. Unless I'm like David Walmsley, he po- he posted the other day, just picture him sitting on the beach, basically working. And I'm like, why am I not doing that? You I cannot see your keyboard. Yeah, I cannot see the ocean from my window here. What, uh, who is it? Guillermo del Toro does, uh, he's got like the basement house. Like it's a house inside of his basement that uh, he's got waterworks flowing. So it, it sounds like it's um, like like a thunderstorm outside and there's actual rain. Uh, and that's nice. how he writes. Yeah. So get rich and then rain inside isn't a problem. <laughs> yeah, I need to get rich like that. No doubt. Well, today we are going to be talking with Vito about a, an exciting new plugin he has for WordPress called WP Feedback which allows clients and developers to collaborate directly on your website. So if you're building websites for clients in WordPress, like most of us are, this plugin is definitely going to help you save tons of time and headaches. We're going to talk about some of those headaches that we have uh, as agency owners all the time. I do want to say today's show is sponsored by Funnel Packs. Funnel Packs are pre-built marketing funnels for your digital agency. Whether you're an agency owner, solo designer, developer, or marketer, Funnel Packs have been created for you to set up on your website in under an hour. In fact, I've tested that. Everything is editable so you can adapt the content, design, and layout to suit your audience. Break out of the feast and famine cycle and start generating more leads with Funnel Packs. You can learn more at funnelpacks.co and I greatly appreciate Funnel Packs for sponsoring the show. So let's get into it. Mr. Vito, why don't you tell us a little bit of back- background about yourself, how you got into this and how you ended up here today. I'd love to hear about it. All right, sure. So um, I actually, I started building websites. My first website I built when I was 14 years old. It was uh, on uh, GeoCities uh, back, uh, back then. And it was for my skateboarding crew uh, that I had uh, at the time when I was 14 years old. That's awesome. And, <laughs> and from there, it kind of like started uh, moving uh, forward into learning design, learning these kind of things. Uh, pretty much at the same time, I started the playing as well, playing guitar. And uh, that kind of took my entire focus for the next decade, um, where I started the band, we started like playing back home. And uh, after years of uh, kind of like running and uh, trying to figure out what to do, um, I kind of took it upon myself to learn how to properly market. Uh, for me, it was for the band. But uh, in general, it proved to be a, a great uh, life skill. Uh, so I really dove into a business and marketing and uh, and um, uh, how like and the digital uh, and digital in general. So I learned like PPC and uh, and that's where I kind of got my first taste into WordPress in the AdSense era, if you guys remember. Sure. Uh, and um, and the entire my kind of entire notion was to find something that will sponsor my true love to music. Uh, while I do uh, that. And um, at some point, we kind of like took everything that we learned, everything that I learned from uh, from all of this research and, and this uh, countless of books and this kind of stuff. And uh, we rebranded the band, um, which kind of started a whole new thing for us. And within 30 days after we launched a new thing, uh, we got signed here in the UK. Um, pretty much just by publishing things online and uh, applying the digital strategies that now I do for myself and for my clients as well. Uh, and that kind of uh, got us here to the UK. That time we released two albums worldwide and we started touring the world, um, which was like a dream for me. Um, and, you know, we started really small, like 10 people, then to hundreds, then to thousands. And uh, then eventually the band broke up in one day. Um, but the thing is that through this entire time, we were all still dead broke. So um, from the back of the van, that's where I started my design kind of agency. Uh, I started building websites for clients that heard about my activities online through the band and just asking, uh, I need some help with Facebook, I need some help with the website and so on. And once the band broke up, uh, it was like, okay, let's focus on this and uh, let's see what I can build out of this. Yeah. And a uh, year after that, uh, I started as a freelancer 
and um, uh, and within the first year I got to six figures, and now I have a team of twelve guys uh, spread around the world. Some of them are in house here as well in London. Uh, and as I got to like uh, as I scaled up the agency, I realized what I guess a lot of the listeners are also uh, are realizing that uh, first of all, clients don't listen, and and the reason why I found that they don't listen is because they don't know what we're talking about. It's it's completely far far from their reality. It's not within their perception uh, of how the world works, all the stuff that we need them to do. Uh, so uh, that was the first thing. And, uh, and uh, um, also on top of that, like uh, I found that it's really hard to scale an agency. Uh, if you want to do something that is huge, uh, that's probably not the right model. Uh, so w- these two realizations came about, came about the same time when we were trying to figure out what can we do to solve our client problem? Because I figured that if if we can't uh, um, reduce the friction and serve the clients with a lot more efficiency than we are at that stage, um, I can scale further, at least to the next level. And so that's where WP Feedback came to life. The idea was just to try and help us within the agency uh, to speak to our clients, get content from them, uh, get them to approve our designs and uh, provide ongoing support. And um, and the main thing that we've noticed is that while we're usually and that's what kind of like we've been told uh, within our within the WordPress ecosystem is to just train them and teach them how to do it. And so we shared videos and we did documents and we did all of these kind of stuff. Um, but most most of them didn't even look at the videos. Uh, and so I tried to flip the concept on its head and to think from the client side. How can I make this more real for them? Something that is relatable to the stuff that they're already doing uh, in their day-to-day activities, running their own businesses. And nothing is simpler than just click and write, you know? So that's where the concept of just having uh, tickets spread throughout the page came to life. Well, that's perfect when you when you can you have this problem and then all of a sudden this uh this light bulb goes off in your head and you're like I know exactly how I can solve that. I mean that's how you make real solutions for things. It's not just coming up with ideas. You know you you were there to serve a purpose. And that's funny yeah. you talk about you know kind of starting all this with all the digital marketing and stuff with your band. When I when I first started doing any kind of design stuff, it was the same thing. Like I wanted to make kick ass posters for the band. You know so we're making like band logos for all of our friends and I'm. <laughs> I'm in uh, Paint Shop Pro back in the day. I couldn't afford uh, uh, Photoshop, so I'm I'm whipping out designs and stuff for them. And I think the first couple websites were were for bands, and they were just like, you know, word or uh, uh, Notepad document, you know, HTML thing. So <laughs> that's funny. I think uh, I think there's lots of people that start out that way. Yeah, somehow there's loads of musicians in our niche, uh, and which I love. You know, I think that it kind of brings together the creativity that we've learned through music. Um, but we just channel it in a way that actually can help us grow in life. <laughs> yeah, and that's pretty amazing too to take like the, all that digital marketing stuff and apply it to your band, just like you would apply it to a business, you know. Yeah. And and that made a huge difference for y'all. That's pretty awesome. Yeah. So it didn't really work out so much in terms of the income, um, but it did work out in terms of the audience and the reach and and the way that we were kind of uh, a, a, a reaching new crowds and and this, and helping people discover us online. Um, I think that if I've done it today, I would crack the revenue thing as well. Uh, but back then, I, I was uh, still uh, out of my reach. <laughs> yeah, no doubt. And there's there's plenty of important things going on when you're younger too that don't <laughs> don't involve money. That like, oh, partying, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> that's better than getting paid, anyways. So, <laughs> no doubt. Well, I, I do want to talk about some of these struggles that we have because I'm actually, I mean, I'm just constantly going through these, you know. So uh, I have a customer right now who's only looked at the site we're developing in, on his phone. He's never right. even opened it up on desktop. So when I start explaining why things are certain ways, he has no idea because he didn't have a computer to open it up and look on, which is a good point of like where we are today and and mobile focus being so important. But still, like we have this conversation problem or I have customers that I say, you know, go to such and such page, you know, or give me the URL. They have no idea what a URL is. They're typing their, their website name into the Google search and then trying to find their website. That's how they get to it. So you're right. Like these clients just have no stinking idea how to do this. So I do end up producing tons of like videos and walkthroughs and I'm just like, you know, how, how do I get to like this base level of knowledge every time for a customer? So 
Um, Matt, you actually uh, kind of put together a little system you you were using on your website. Why don't you tell us about uh, about what you put together? Yeah, so I uh, I created a subdomain um, for my like all my clients uh, just for developing, and um, you know that 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 works fairly okay, but you're still relying on email for the uh, the back and forth. So I cobbled together um, something similar to what Vito did, but Vito's is far better. Um, but basically, you know, it's just a uh, it's it's a version of their their website. But um, on top of everything, I installed Hotspot so that I could leave messages uh, to my clients saying, "This is your your uh, your hero section. This is what it's for. This is what it should say," and basically give them uh, explanations as well as uh, you know requests for copy or images, um, all right there on the page that they're looking at. You know, that way they don't have to go back and forth from an email and look at the page and go back to the email. Um, however, you know, it was it, it's fairly cobbled together, but it works, you know, and it, it, it's it's a starting point. But uh, I'm really after checking out uh, uh, the, the website here for Vito, um, I was blown away. Like, I mean, it, it's what I'm using with a whole ton more uh, functionality. Right. Yeah. So let me ask you this, Vito, if, if you've gotten into this problem, and, and I think this is pretty common, so I'm, I'm going to take go out on a limb here and say that you have doing agency work. So I get this problem of, I tell the, the client, and it's in my contract and everything, you need to provide me the content for your website. And they sign off on the contract that they probably didn't even read either, right. uh, but they sign off on that, and then they say, okay, let's get started. And it's like they're looking at me to get started. Like, well, well, you need to give me content. And it's this chicken or the egg type thing. So they don't know what content to write because they can't see where it goes. And I can't lay something out because I don't know what I'm going to be laying out. So is that a new experience as well? Yes. So we tried a bunch of things, but but really quickly, I realized that that doing this process of uh, uh, of getting the, the contract signed off, getting the initial deposit paid off, and then telling them, cool, now the ball is in your court, it's not, it's not a really cool uh, a client experience. You know, they just started off this relationship and then all of a sudden you're sending them to do work without them even knowing your, knowing your value. It's, it's fine to do these kind of things once they know you and they appreciate that what you're saying uh, has merit, but at this early stage, it just didn't really work. And we ended up with projects that it, it, we had one guy that took uh, literally a full year to just provide an about page. Uh, and that includes like ongoing notifications and these kind of things. I had another guy and that was shocking. Uh, that was uh, just when I was starting off. Uh, I guess I wasn't clear uh, enough, but I said, okay, I need the content for the website. And so I got uh, 24 pages um, uh, with all the content, um, including images and everything but it was all printed and sent to me in the mail. So I got like an envelope with everything and then I need to type everything back into the computer. Uh, that was, and even the logo was printed. Uh, that was great. <laughs> and it's, so yeah, that, I, got, I got a customer right now that is doing all the changes. He's writing them out on notebook paper and then yeah. holding the notebook paper up and taking a picture with his phone <laughs> and, then, and then texting it to me. And I'm just like, you know what? <laughs> I don't even have time to explain why this is terrible. I'm just going to do it, you know, and it's, yeah. it's, it ruins my, it like sucks the soul out of my body every time I get one of those messages, you know? Yeah. And, I mean, and, it's kind and, of and again, adorable. I, yeah. <laughs> and again, I think it just comes back to that uh, difference of how we perceive reality and how we see the world. For us, it seems so obvious that the address bar is where the link is, but they're just blind to these things. Uh, and so, like, it's it's better to try and look at this from their end because, uh, first of all, we're serving clients. That's the that's why we're all uh, at the end of the day. That's what we're all doing. Uh, you know, we we probably all got into it because we wanted to design and we wanted to kind of uh, uh, create something beautiful. Um, but at the end of the day, the day to day work, we all know it's just uh, communicating with clients, getting them to uh, uh, to do what we need to do. And so that's kind of the way that I'm trying to do everything now. There is, there is a, an, a principle that is actually being driven by Amazon and brought them, got them to be uh, the biggest company in the world, uh, where, where the concept is simply eat your clients' complications. So whenever there is an issue that uh, you see they're struggling with, I try to look at this as to what can I do to solve the problem for them and therefore, first of all, improve our relationship 
and also save myself a lot of headaches and a lot of time of trying to manage that uh, friction, you know, and back and forth and all of these annoying stuff. Yeah. And it's sometimes you, you, you want them or you feel like they should be responsible for something, uh, but they don't fully understand it. And you kind of have this like friction that you said, like, you know, you don't, you don't want to have to do all the work for them, but then they don't understand it. And, and in reality, like, should they understand all this? No, they no. run some kind of business and it yeah. has nothing to do with websites. And as soon as this project's over, they're going to forget about all of it. So, yeah. you know, how can you be that hero for them that comes in and like, I'm going to help you through everything and get all this done, which I think really makes you stand apart from a lot of the uh, the grumpy developers that just seem to disappear. And then I get all their clients that say, our last <laughs> developer just disappeared on us. Weird, you know? <laughs> yeah, we most of our clients came through this channel as well. That's the best marketing channel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just finding the ones that were burned before and telling them, uh, you know. In fact, that might not be a bad messaging campaign for the, the homepage on your website. Like, did your last developer disappear on you? And I think <laughs> like half the people that come to your website will like mm -hmm. identify with that. That's that's great. Free actually. tip today for you. So <laughs> use that. Well, so uh, so when you were, you were struggling with these same problems, it looks like we all kind of have the same thing. There are some solutions out there on the market that do try to tackle this. I have one of them and I use it on earlier. I think I told you I use it on about half the websites I'm developing. But when I started actually looking to see if I'm like fact checking myself, I'm not even using it on half of them. And it's because it creates so much more work for me. Uh, and then I also have to go in and train the clients on how you're going to log into this system and it's going to redirect you to this one. And then you can, you know, so then. I, I don't have to explain to them what the hero section is and what the navigation is, but I have to explain to them how to use this system to get into it. So kind of what were the the key points you wanted to focus on to try to solve for customers when you started developing this this product? So we've tried a bunch of these tools uh, before we uh, we started developing our own. We were using a, a Envision for uh, the bigger projects even. And um, for a lot of them, it's about screenshots. So you take a screenshot and then you import it into some kind of a third party platform where you can just tag things around over there. But then what happens is that once you, uh, once the client responds and tell you, okay, cool, let's change this button to that. Let's change this text to that. Then you need to recreate the screenshot, re-upload it and um, move everything around to match the new kind of uh, skewed layout that happened after the changes. Uh, so, and we ended up with one of the projects uh, I just checked uh, last week, and we ended up with like 107 screenshots that would needed to be managed uh, every time there was a slight change over there, which was a nightmare. It was, it was so time consuming uh, for our side. The client loved it because again, just click and write. That's, the, that's as easy as it gets. Um, another thing that, we're, that I'm trying to, um, uh, uh, to look into our solution that, that should do, is, uh, is empowering the, cl the client. So most of our clients don't even visit the website. Uh, they, they, they count on us to build it uh, and, uh, and that's it. It just stays there as a kind of like a really fancy online business card. Um, and uh, that's a huge mistake because a WordPress website is such a valuable marketing tool for the business. And without properly utilizing it, you're just losing money uh, or you, you just spend money on something and you look at it as an expense rather than an investment into your business. Mm -hmm. So the way that I see it, once the reason why they, they don't kind of, uh, uh, they don't face the website and they don't kind of like go in there and start thinking the things themselves is they're scared of it. They're just, they can't face the, the change compared to the other things that they've been doing. And even the ones that do go in the back end, they see the WordPress interface, for us, you know, to me, it's like looking at the back of my hand after the, a few hundred websites. But for them looking at it for the first time, it's, you know, it, it, it's just completely full. And it's like me trying to do accountant work, <laughs> you know. Uh, so uh, so what I'm trying to do is, first of all, uh, there's no other logins. You don't need to go to another platform, which, again, pushes you away from the goal of the client facing their own website. If we keep telling them, go to teamwork, go to Trello, go to Thing, go to this, go to Envision, go to all of these kind of additional stuff. Um, and we never tell them, go to your website, right? We never tell right. them, log into your website. And so that's the first thing. Once they are in there and they, uh, and they see that the process is as simple as just clicking around, 
that's it. The, uh, even on my demo page, I kind of stated that uh, uh, the, the, the whole thing that you need to tell your client in order for them to realize what they need to do. Let me just even see that one second. It's like a one sentence thing. And it's pretty powerful when you think about it. So it's like, click the plus icon and choose an element of the page and start commenting. And this is all you need to tell your client. This is the entire summary of the training that we would need to do. Uh, just click the plus item and choose whatever, whatever you want, you know? And this is, you know, compared to all of the documents and spreadsheets and PDFs and all of these things, uh, to me, it seems like really, really transformative. So empowering the client by getting them logged into their own website is a huge differentiator. No one else does that. Um, they have a task management uh, system that is built into the back end of the website. The entire UI and the entire interface is very, very, very user friendly. I'm looking at this not, it's, it's a great tool for us, the developers and the people that build websites, but it's not just for us. And it's even more for the client uh, so that they can feel comfortable uh, getting into this new environment. And, uh, and getting familiar with WordPress and trying to figure out what are the benefits that they can use out of it. What we're seeing is that uh, by using this tool um, and, and empowering them to actually log into their own website, they don't come back to us with the small and annoying changes as they, as they did before. So if they need to change the text on a button or something like that, they just already know how to do it. And it's quicker for them to do it themselves uh, than to send to create a support ticket. Uh, so that's great because these are the most annoying stuff that uh, uh, that you can do within your business. Just change uh, misprints and, uh, and 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 small kind of uh, uh, positions of buttons all around the site. And th the second thing is that once they really see the value in the website and they realize what is WordPress, uh, they come back to us with a lot of uh, additional features. Uh, you know, we had clients that came to to do, but uh, more significant stuff. So um, having like a, a booking system built into the website, having a client dashboard that is geared specifically to their clients. So it kind of uh, inspires them to, um, to keep investing into the, into the project and, and looking at digital as an integral part of their business rather than just something you did so you have it. Well, it's a pretty simple principle, right? So if, if I'm doing something new and it's complicated and hard and daunting and takes me a lot of time and I don't understand it and I have to go back and forth with this guy, you know, I, I always relate it to like getting my car worked on because I know nothing right. about cars. So when I go to the shop to have my car worked on, he could tell me anything and I'm going to believe him. I have no freaking idea. And when I'm done with it, I just don't want to mess with it. If my car starts making that noise again, I'm just going to ignore it for as long as humanly possible because I don't <laughs> want that friction of like, all that mess of having to deal with it. And, and, you know, you talk about like all these different platforms and, you know, I've tried a bunch of different project management systems and, and it, it just always ends up so messy. Like there's stuff here, stuff here, stuff there. And it makes this whole thing not user friendly for the client. So the basic principle is if you make this a really easy thing to do for your client, they're going to want to come back and do more and more and more and more to their website and grow it and expand it over time. So that's great for us because that means more revenue in the long run and we get to do exactly. more work for them. But it's also the best possible thing they can do for their online presence is to always be growing it and managing it and maintaining it. Just like me and you, we all do with our own websites because yeah. we know the value in that. If this, if this whole process is that enjoyable or that easy for them with less friction, they're just more apt to do it, you know? Exactly. And this is basically the business model for Amazon. That's what, that's their entire uh, business in one sentence. They just want to make things, they just want to make life easier for us. Um, and it's really interesting to dig into these things. I, I know that we don't have much time, but maybe at another, <laughs> another time we can uh, really go into it because I really researched the way that they look at their integrations and their interactions with clients. And, uh, and it's just mind blowing the level of simplicity that they're trying to generate for us and um, throughout their entire business model. Yeah. And it's, I mean, it works. I bought yeah. up every damn day. We have some package on the doorstep from Amazon. I swear <laughs> anything we need is just like, do I want to drive all the way across town and go buy that one thing? No, I'll just press this one button on my phone and then it shows up at my house. Exactly. Like, and that's that, not because Amazon's better or the price is usually not that much different. It's just because it's that easy. Easy. That's it. That's it. They ate all of our complications. 
Yeah, that's interesting. So definitely go check out, uh, you can check out WP Feedback at theadminbar.com forward slash WP Feedback. And Vito gave us a coupon code, which is love tab, L-O-V-E-T-A-B, because we all love the admin bar. You can use that and get a special discount on top of the product. So I want to ask you kind of some things about how this works. So uh, let's say I'm setting up a brand new website for a client. I want to use WP feedback on it. Uh, what do I need to do on this brand new development install to, in, to get this system integrated into the website? So uh, the first thing you go to, to our website, you download the plugin, uh, get the license key and everything. You upload it to your client's website like any other plugin. Um, as soon as uh, you activate it, it will pull uh, uh, like a small wizard a three-step wizard that will just help you uh, sort everything out. The first step is just inputting the license so we know that you're legit. Uh, the second thing is uh, choosing which uh, user roles are allowed to use this. So we don't want subscribers to comment or uh, uh, clients if you have this kind of user role on, this, uh, uh, on, on the website. So you can choose only admins, editors, authors, and so on. Uh, the, last, then the third thing is uh, notifications. So we have, at this point, we have six notifications. Um, and this is also something that I tried to systemize that we did within our business is that every week at the end of the week, we send out like a, a weekly wrap up of what we've done, what uh, we're doing now and what we're going to do next. Uh, so that does it for you automatically, uh, sends it to you and to the client and you can choose either on a daily basis, weekly basis or both, um, as well as a bit more kind of like uh, on hands notifications, like every time someone creates a task, every time someone put something in critical uh, every time uh, uh, someone replies. So these kind of things. And that's it. I, I want to inter inter interrupt you for one second because the I system like I that I, is going. Yeah, the system <laughs> that I am using some of the time, um, and I mean, it's no secret. I use Project Huddle on some things. And the problem is, is the note. I, I, I like the system, but the notifications are so awful. I just turn them completely off. So then I'm still having to go back and forth through email and tell them, yes, I made these changes. Oh, now you need to go look at it because if not, they get a bazillion. I mean, they go through the website and they might tag, you know, 15 or 20 different things. Well, that's 15 or 20 emails to yeah. me. And then I go through and change all those things and they get 15 or 20 emails back. Believe me, that is not user friendly at all. You know, they're pissed I, I by the time that happens. <laughs> I agree. And actually, we spoke about this uh, before, Kyle, and uh, you gave me a really nice kind of uh, um, concept where they will, uh, where you kind of like turn off the notifications for while you're working. And then you have like a bulk send button that will just wrap up everything in the last uh, 24 hours or the last five hours. And just send all of that in one go and that's added to the roadmap and probably we'll have it in a couple of months as well yes i think that's perfect just say okay it, it's i'm done now you know mm -hmm. yeah exactly exactly uh, yeah so that's the onboard process that's the on onboarding process uh from from then um so that's from the developer side when you install it now from the client side we have a different small wizard uh, which is a front-end kind of thing that happens. So when the client goes on the website for the first time, uh, it will open um, a, a pop-up uh, asking them who they are. So they have three choices, either they're, I, I called it like uh, the king, uh, the king, the advisor, and the council. So the king is the client, the advisor is us, and the council are all of the other people that work on the website, like the SEO guy, the content manager, the uh, uh, the shop manager, all of these kind of different uh, roles that are not uh, uh, not the king and not the advisor. Uh, and then uh, that's the first thing. Once you choose that, it asks you uh, which notifications you would like to get. So after the first filter that the developer did, let's say out of the six notifications, the developer decided that on this website, there should be only a uh, notification one, two, or, and four, for example. So these are the only options that the client will have, but they can also decide to opt out of some of them. So this will all be turned on by default and say like recommended, but uh, uh, if they don't want to receive a notification every time or a daily, a daily roundup of everything, they can just click there and uh, opt out of it. And the last screen is just telling them, uh, click the plus icon and choose an element on the page to start commenting. And that's it. So easy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, you know, like I said, like I, I started making, 
like onboarding demonstration videos of this is how you're going to go in and put all these comments and stuff in because I, 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 the first couple of websites I did, I did this one off with the customer and said, you know, okay, go here, log in here. It's going to take you here, click here, do all this, you know? And I thought, well, this is, this is not saving anybody any time at all. Uh, and so the fact that that work to their, their yeah. workload, right? So the fact that you kind of already pre-baked in the client onboarding, I think is, massive like that is a that is a huge game changer because that changes everything for what i need to do like i don't i don't really have to do anything once i install it they're going to be trained on how to do it with that one magical sentence you know yeah exactly because what i what i saw and when i was started working with this with the beta group as well we started seeing that um a basically we are as people uh, we're um, a kind of an interesting mixture of uh, uh, of creatives and technical people so we have both of these wrapped into one which a lot of times causes us to over over uh, complicate things and uh, think that we're trying to to be elaborate in our instructions so that people will understand but we're just shooting our, ourselves in the foot by uh, expecting the clients to go through every word that we're saying like it's uh it's uh, the, in the bible you know right and so, understand it and, and recall it later and exactly so so by just making things intuitive you know you don't need instructions there's no instruction book that comes with an ipad maybe right, is, that's the other right. <laughs> so uh you know, you know, it's kind of like one of those things where we're competing with the Wixes of the world, you know, and the reason Wix and some of those other platforms have gotten market share with business owners is because it is simplistic to get in there and do. I'm not saying it's a good option for them, but the reason they use it is because they don't need a whole lot of training and WordPress isn't the same as that. You right. know, you, you have to know some more things than you have to know with with Wix. But if you can solve that problem by making this just as easy, most of the clients don't want to build the website themselves anyways. And in fact, yeah. the clients that I get that do want to kind of build the website themselves are usually the worst client. The uh, ones that should do it themselves. Yes, they yeah. should just do it. Those are the ones I recommend to Wix. Um, <laughs> yeah. But if we can make this process so easy that, that it's like using Wix, except they don't have to do it themselves, you know, I think that's a win for sure. I mean, Matt, it, imagine, I know, you know, we talk a lot about each other's clients. So I know uh, which clients I have in mind with you when I'm asking this, but I won't name them by name. But appreciate I know that. you have several pro Do what? I said I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I know you have several projects where, you know, imagine if you could wave the magic wand and you're no longer having to deal with all these things back and forth. How does that change some of these projects that have been ongoing for a while? Well, for one, I would be waving that magic wand all day long. And for <laughs> two, those projects would be done months ago. So yeah, it's just all good news. Yeah, for sure. So uh, you said this kind of works too. Um, and, and the way you're kind of marketing this and positioning, I think is a little unique. And I think it's what's really caught my attention. So one of those things is talking about capturing all the technical aspects from the users in. So it's going to capture what browser they're using, the screen size and all that. It attaches, I guess when they make a comment, it attaches to whatever that div is. Exactly. Uh, so you know exactly what they're looking at and how they're looking at it, which I think is super brilliant because I don't know how many times they've said this thing's over here and it should be over there. And then I realized they're looking at it on, you know, some tiny little screen or whatever it may be. So I think understanding that's super important. And the other thing you talk about is kind of using this as an ongoing tool with them into the future. So I advocate trying to get all my clients onto care plans so Great. that I can work with them into the future. So how do you kind of see this working as something you just leave on their website forever? Uh, tell us a little bit about that. Cool. So uh, it's again going back to the simplicity kind of thing. So let's look at what we're all doing right now. We have uh, three steps that we need to take the client through uh, in a span. Let's say if they are doing everything that we're doing, it's going to be happening over the span of a month, a month and a half. Uh, we need to get the content. We need them to approve our designs. And then we need to provide ongoing support. That are the three kind of like different processes that we need to train them on. We need to get them to do in order for them to, in order for the project to be successful. So the way I see it, why? Why should we teach them three different processes in a few weeks time where it's the first experience that they had uh, or the second experience in their life building a website? Uh, it just makes no sense to me. 
So uh, what, I, what we try to do here is to have like one tool that you can use from the beginning of the relationship. You teach them with that one sentence, you know, just click and click the plus icon and choose an element on the, of the page and uh, use that throughout the entire relationship. No confusions and no kind of, uh, a, a, no, there's no additional cost for us as, a, as developers with the, all of the thousands of tools that I've bought throughout the years. Um, but, but the best thing is that once they know a system and they get familiar with it, uh, instead of pivoting and starting a new, brand new system, a brand new process, they just keep on doing what they already felt comfortable doing. So uh, that's the um, uh, so that's kind of the way that I look at it. In terms of content, you asked uh, initially, Kyle, what's the kind of the process because they don't know how how long to put the stuff and all of these kind of things. What we started doing and that works really well is uh, we'll, we create the website, we build everything within the browser, um, unless it's like really specific features that need really custom code. In, in, even in this sense, we create it in Photoshop and then upload an image onto where it should be within the browser so they can already play around and see what's going on. So the first thing is a prototype. Within the prototype, we place play, uh, uh, Lorem Ipsum, like placeholder text uh, throughout the website that tells them the length of the content that uh, they should provide to us. And then you just sprinkle these kind of uh, uh, tickets on the pieces of content that they need to provide to you. They have a full list of all of this stuff, but they, all could, they can also see them uh, sprinkled on the page. So they just click and, you know, a lower Ipsum chunk will say, please tell me what to write here as a comment from us to them, from the developer to the, to the client. Uh, please tell us what to write here. It should match the same length as what you're seeing here. That's it. And th then they just provide these things in there. We copy paste them in there. So we have the content. The next thing is the design. So you co we complete all of the tasks, which cleans up the board. Uh, once something is complete, and you have a checkbox to show all the completed tasks, but once something is marked as completed, it just disappears from view. Uh, so you all always know what is uh, a, a in front of what you're facing at any given moment. Um, design exactly the same thing. Just go around the website, click around, tell us what needs to be changed, what needs to happen. And then for the support, again, the same thing. Whenever there is a problem, whenever there is an issue, we had a client just uh, last week that deleted their entire Uber menu with like 300 items. Uh, so, uh, so just add a checkbox on the menu, you know. Uh, I don't know what happened here, but we already, we already saw that he was on Chrome, which led us to realize that he probably has a bunch of Chrome extensions that create problems in the, in the menu section within WordPress. So just by looking at what the scenario uh, happened, it helped us solve the problem like this. Uh, another client that, uh, um, uh, that was before we had the plugin, he uh, told us, I can't see the Add to Cart button. So we went to the website and we can see the add to cart button on the products that we checked, but there were like three and a half thousand products on the website. And apparently the one product that he was looking at was just out of stock. And so the button disappeared. And, sure. but it took us like a year, a, a month and a half, um, an hour and a half <laughs> uh, to just figure out what he's talking about. A lot of back and forth. Where is it? We can't see it. They feel frustrated because you're telling them that they're wrong. Right. We, we do that all the time, uh, you know, not not intentionally, but that's that's kind of like a, I can't see the problem. You know, I see everything is fine. And, and how they aggravating see is that time. for the client that's yeah. staring at, you know, it clearly yeah. on their end isn't there. Yeah. Exactly. And while exactly. we think our clients are stupid, sometimes, um, <laughs> you know, most of the time they're really not. They just... No see things in a different way than we do. So that definitely helps. This is reality. Yeah, that's a, that's a great, great thing to remember when you're communicating with clients. It's just that each one of us sees the world differently. Kyle, you play guitar, right? You see a guitar, you don't see this shape. You see the frets, you see the strings, you see the notes, you see all of these things that uh, uh, that Matt, if, you, if you're not playing, you just see a, ch a, a red chunk in the background of uh, Kyle's... Uh, strings and uh, wood. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah. Just I mean, I notice those things like uh, you watch movies, right? And some movie, there's a guy playing a guitar and it will just drive me <laughs> nuts because you'll, you know, that's not what they're playing. They're making the it cable up. is not plugged in even. Yeah. Yeah. And their, their fingers aren't on the right part of the fretboard. I'm like, this is not realistic at all. And I'll bitch about it. My wife's like, what are you talking about? You know? So, I mean, that's exactly just an illustration of, you know, you see things differently. Yeah. 
yeah so so it's a just great thing to remember especially when you're working with clients that each one of us is uh has their own we are we, we even though we all have eyes we don't see the world in the same way you know yeah and i think you know this this goes off the plug-in a little bit but i think just kind of like from our business sense and trying to make things easy for the client you know 90 percent of the websites we do are generally the same thing it's some words it's some headlines it's some body copy it's some images it's a contact form and then yeah. we kind of rearrange those pieces a bunch of different ways you know but we understand what all those parts are and our clients don't so when we get to that like chicken or the egg problem and they don't know where to put what kind of content and all that you know just simply laying something out wh whatever you come up with uh, as a general guide for them is probably going to be you know, 20 times better than what they're just going to come up with on their own. So being able to just, let's just throw in some placeholder stuff and give them the ability to go in and fix what these things are. Those things are always fluid. And, and we might say, we only give you this much space. And they say, oh, well, I really need this much space. And we say, okay, let's break it Fine, up into yeah. three sections and problem solved, you know, but giving them something to start with is, is probably super helpful. I, I now, totally agree. I, I, now, we started talking about kind of like that ongoing thing. So is that kind of how you manage, you know, with, with my care plan, I think with Matt's care plan, you know, they can do so many changes per month and we allot so much time for them. Um, so if that just stays on their website, when they need something done, they just log in at whatever point, click on the little button, add their changes, submit it to us, and we get it in our queue. No, no support tickets and different systems and everything for that as well. So we're kind of already set up with a support desk. Uh, so we're using teamwork for, uh, for all of our uh, internal communications and, uh, and support desk and project management. Uh, but this is for us. This is for me to manage my business. It's not something that is uh, for the client. You know, no one likes to talk to a support, to a support ticket. Uh, I don't like talking to a, to a company that, I, you know, that every time you talk to someone else and you have this loads of text in the beginning and the bottom, you know, it, it's yeah. not a pleasant experience. Uh, so, uh, so while we do manage these things through a support desk, uh, you can integrate the plugin through basically just the WordPress Zapier integration and you can pull everything in, in there. Um, the structure is pretty uh, uh, straightforward. So you just choose a custom post type and you will see the tickets on there, which then you can connect to uh, a few, I, I don't remember, like a, a thousand plus uh, apps that are on Zapier. Sure. Uh, uh, so that's a great way to integrate this. Um, if it's, uh, you know, if it's an agency that manages a lot of care plans, then this is actually, I think, I think this is the right thing to do to still have a support desk and project management system, but it's not for communicating with the client, it's for the in-house communications so that we're all on the same page within the agency. Uh, and, um, and if it's a smaller project, then, and, or let's say you're, you're a freelancer doing one project at a time or two projects at a time, you don't need anything. It's, it's going to send you an email. You click on the link, takes you to exactly to where the problem is, and you just comment there as long as you're logged in. So, Matt, before we get to wrapping this up here, do you have any questions to add for Vito? Or is there anything else you want to make sure we hit on? No, not that I can think of. Okay, so Vito, why don't you tell us a little bit about how the pricing structure for this works? Right, so there are three plans. Uh, there's the basic one where it's just like a, you know for one domain. So you can choose, you can you can you can replace this between different domains. Let's say you're a freelancer doing one project at a time and not providing support and so on. So you can just change the domain and uh, use the same license. Uh, and then you have like a, a higher plans with the pro and the and agency. And uh, depending on the amount of uh, domains that uh, you need or the amount of websites that you're managing uh, simultaneously, uh, so that's the right plan that uh, you should choose. It does work with every uh, uh, page builder with any team. So that's not, uh, uh, that was a big concern for us as well. Um, but, um, but it's because we're just, it's a front end tool that just clings onto uh, the raw HTML. It doesn't really matter what kind of places you're using. And um, yeah, so that's pretty much uh, how it works. So is there is there plans for uh, like an unlimited number of websites or are they all structured with a certain finite amount? At this point, there is the agency plan, which is unlimited, but uh, we're thinking that uh, uh, it might uh, not be there for long because uh, we c it, there's people that, uh, that have signed up that you can see they have 100 plus websites and so on, which 
that means they're pretty much paying like two pounds or two dollars a, a year per website hey you're running and, a business too yeah 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 uh, of course i know you know the thing is that uh, an agency that has like 50 websites that is running a tool like this reduces an employee that's as simple as that you yeah. know uh, so uh so it is worth the value here is is Tremendous, not in term, not just only in terms of uh, um, removing friction and improving our relationship with the clients, but literally just from the fact that it saves loads of time. Yeah, and I think that's one thing. Like, maybe this is just kind of just the natural way things happen. But I know when I first started using WordPress stuff, I tried to get everything into the website that was free. You know, like exactly. I was using every free solution possible because I didn't have money to spend on all this. And now, like. If, if there's a free solution, a paid solution, I'm only going for the paid solution because I know there's going to be support for it. You know, if I'm paying somebody for this thing, I know that they're going to be a company that can potentially be around for a while, continue development on all of it and everything. And I think you're at some point in that process of you starting this business, you realize that uh, free plugins are really actually pretty risky. Now, there's some caveats sure. to that. Um, but for the most part, you you want to be paying at least a fair price for whatever solutions you're using because you know that those things can be supported and maintained, you know? So I think, I think I people totally get agree. that now you're at least, you know, I'm to the point where I fully understand it. Well, I think that it's kind of a, an evolution of a, of a designer. So it, it, when I first started, I was the same, you know, you're broke. So you, you just try to find free solutions and you just amaze, amazed that there are like 60,000 plugins that you can just choose from. Uh, but then when you start really looking into it and, you really uh, work within the business for a few years, uh, you start seeing the ones that drop off and, and the ones that have uh, like security risks, risks and, uh, and all of the implica uh, implications of uh, not having a team that supports and, uh, and uh, updates the plugin on a regular basis. Uh, yeah, so uh, I'm happy to pay like uh, yearly licenses uh, for, like developer licenses for like, you know, like gravity forms and I have uh, a tool set and uh, WPML and all of these kind of tools that I know that we will use on almost every website. Yeah, there's no doubt. There is actually one question that I wanted to get to that I didn't and then we'll wrap up here. So because you're um, because you're installing this plugin to connect everything onto your client site, what kind of performance effects does this have onto the website? So, you know, talking about loading time and stuff like that, are we going to experience any kind of issues with that? That's a really, that's a, a question that comes up a lot, and um, and it's a good question because I'm worried about these things uh, all the time within the websites that I build. Uh, and uh, the cool thing here is that first of all, for the guests, for people that are not logged into the website the plugin is off. It's just, uh, it has no effect on the speed whatsoever. Uh, but even if you are logged in, what we did to try and tackle this, uh, this problem is that because at some point you're going to have like 20 or 30 tickets on a page uh, and with some of them including screenshots and files and some of them have like long conversations. So we only load the, the, the tickets that are open. So only once you click on the element, it loads the conversation for that specific ticket. And even that, in terms of load time, it's like loading a comment section on a WordPress website, which is a kind of like a fraction of a second. Uh, so uh, from what we're seeing right now, there's no effect on the speed. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to keep it like that. Yeah, and that's part. I mean, the, my main concern is those people who are not logged in. So the users of the yeah. website that they don't, you know, if when I'm logged in, there's obviously there's going to be things to load and I'm going to have clients upload a seven megabyte picture for a tiny <laughs> little thumbnail and shit like that. So, yeah. uh, you know, I understand and, how that. And even that, you know, like uh, when, when, a, when a client uploads a picture and you have this little preview, so we're pulling the thumbnail, but you can put, you can download the full size mm -hmm. file. So it also kind of helps in the speeds and everything. It sounds like y'all are thinking of all of it. So that's awesome. Yes, that's the uh, <laughs> yeah. It's because it's so because it's uh, so personal. You know, it's uh, yeah. It's not something that you're coming from the outside and and you're doing. Uh, and uh, you know, we've we've already built plugins. We've already did this kind of stuff for clients. And now it's really exciting that we have something a little baby of our own uh, that uh, you know that uh, we can actually grow with and hopefully will take me and my business to the next level. Absolutely. Well, I, I think you're onto something pretty awesome here. And uh, I'm excited to dig into this and start using it on projects. 
So you guys can go to theadminbar.com forward slash WP feedback to check out the website. And don't forget to use the coupon code love tab, L O V E T A B to get your discount on there. We greatly appreciate using our link. That is awesome. Vito, is there anything we forgot or anything you wanted to make sure we get to today? I really appreciate you coming on the show with us. Yeah, first of all, it was a pleasure. Uh, I've been listening to the show, uh, especially not before uh, when we started working on this uh, project, uh, just to listen to what other developers and what other kind of people talk about and and uh, see. Uh, so, um, so thank you for doing this. I think that's the the only thing that uh, that I can say. Um, yeah. Well, we appreciate it. We, it we have a listener. There's proof right there. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. Matt, you got anything to add, buddy? No, I mean, you know, I just think that uh, as far as these solutions and these like these types of solutions go, it's it's usually when you yourself face a problem and you try to figure it out and you make a, that's uh, that solution, they tend to go that much better. So it's awesome that Vito has been able to do that. Yeah. And here in the backstory and like all that goes into it always makes a difference, you know? So I think, uh, I think that's always interesting to hear. All right, Vito. Well, uh, since you're, you're a part of the community here, I'm sure people can hit you up. They can, uh, they can look you up in the group and find you and bug you with stuff. And, and I'll be yeah, glad to sure. answer any questions that I can answer. So, all right, guys, well, that wraps it up for this one. So as a reminder, if this group helps you in any way, the easiest way to help us is to like and share our content, subscribe to our podcast, and use our affiliate links. It's all free. It takes little time, and it greatly helps support the show. That is all for now. We'll catch you guys inside the group. Bye-bye.